The final item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion No. 8737 in the name of Mark Macdonald on applauding autism-friendly theatre and cinema. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be most grateful if those members who wish to contribute could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Mark Macdonald to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Macdonald. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And it's very appropriate that we're having this debate today uh, on World Autism Awareness Day. And can I begin by thanking those members who came along to the photo call uh, which marked Autism Awareness Day. I have to say, Presiding Officer, that the sight of you and other MSPs on Space Hoppers is one that will live with me <laughs> for quite some time to come. But can I begin by setting the context of why I think it's important that we have this debate uh, and what it is that we're discussing. Uh, I, I came into contact with a man by the name of Glyn Morris. Glyn is a gentleman from Murray uh, who has been campaigning on the issue of autism-friendly theatre for some time. And the genesis of his campaign is that he and his family were asked to leave a performance of the musical Wicked in the West End because of the low vowel sounds that his son makes uh, were said to be disrupting the sound engineer. Uh, and I think for any parent, irrespective of whether they have a child with autism or another disability, the very thought of the, the fact that you could be asked to leave a performance that you and your family had been looking forward to for some time. I think it would be extremely distressing for anybody in that situation. But rather than take it as uh, what should happen, Glyn put his efforts into campaigning uh, instead and has been campaigning actively and successfully for Autism Friendly Theatre. And uh, he's inspired me to use what influence I can have to try and build on that as well. And I note that there have been a number of successful autism-friendly performances in Scotland. Uh, in December 2012, the Festival Theatre in Edinburgh hosted what was billed the first ever relaxed theatre performance in Scotland. Now, a lot of people have asked me what is, uh, what is it about a performance that makes it relaxed? And in many respects, it's subtle changes. It can be leaving the house lights uh, on and not turning them off completely. It can be removing strobe lighting from the performance, loud bangs, sudden noises from the performance. It can be allowing people to bring their own food into the production rather than having to purchase that which is vended within the, the cinema or the theatre itself. It can be allowing people the freedom to get up and wander during the performance should that be something they wish to do and providing quiet areas to the side of the venue should people need for whatever reason to leave at any point from the production. These are not significant changes that need to be made but they're important changes which allow theatre and cinema to be more accessible to individuals on the autistic spectrum but not just individuals on the autistic spectrum because I've been contacted by parents of children and adults with uh, a range of disabilities and sensory impairments who have said that relaxed performances don't just open up to people with autism they also open up to people with other disabilities including people who may simply remain away from the theatre because they consider that it is not a welcoming place in performances which have not had these uh, changes made. Um, as I say, the festival theatre performance of The Snowman in December 2012 was marked as being the first autism-friendly theatre performance, but there have been others. The Lion King uh, toured uh, recently, and they had a performance in the West End that was autism-friendly, but they also brought their autism-friendly performance to Edinburgh as well in uh, November of last year. And I want to read a few comments from parents uh, who attended that uh, event. Uh, one said, my five-year-old son had a wonderful experience at the theatre. Let's hope it's not a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Another parent said, my daughter had the most wonderful time at the theatre and was able to access the show, which would never have been possible without this event. And another said, my son Joshua loves The Lion King and I had longed to take him, but never dared taking him due to how he would react to a normal performance and how people in the audience may react to him. It was a fantastic performance and the actors gave their all. Seeing them, that's the audience, so relaxed and knowing they enjoy the show without fear of being judged by less understanding members of the public. You made a lot of people happy today and I know you've made happy memories for lots of families, including my son and I. Let's hope other productions follow suit and do the same. 
And in terms of cinema as well, we've seen Cineworld View and Odeon Cinemas offering autism-friendly screenings in partnership with Dimension, a not-for-profit organisation that supports people who experience autism and people with learning difficulties. And during autism-friendly screenings, low lights are left on in the auditorium and the volume of the soundtrack is reduced. It's fine for customers to move around and to make noise during the film. And View Cinemas have set a date and time when autism-friendly screenings are available. And I know in Aberdeen that the Cineworld uh, also offer them on specific dates as well. And in my own uh, town of Aberdeen, I've also taken the step of writing to the new owners and operators of the Belmont Cinema, the independent cinema within Aberdeen, to ask if they will also consider joining the other cinema uh, operators in providing an autism-friendly screening at their cinema as well. And as I said, I wanted to use what opportunity I could as an MSP to try and influence what was happening. And so I wrote to Aberdeen Performing Arts and asked whether they would consider putting on an autism-friendly performance of their pantomime. I had seen Aberdeen, uh, the um, Aberdeen Arts Centre had put on a relaxed showing of their pantomime, and I felt that Aberdeen Performing Arts should also put on one as well. And I gained support from the theatre and from the theatre production company and from the cast as well, with Elaine C. Smith herself highlighting the fact that she had a nephew with autism and had remembered him coming to see her in Panto and being unable to watch it from within the theatre because he had been terrified by some of the noise and the lights. And again, I want to read uh, a testimony from one of the parents uh, who attended that uh, event, who caught in touch with me afterwards, who said, just wanted to pass on huge thanks for arranging the relaxed performance of Cinderella at Christmas. We took our son to the theatre, hoping that this might be something he could enjoy, and it was such a success. He had never been beyond the door of the theatre or cinema before, but because we were able to lead up gradually to the event, it worked. It was also his 21st birthday, so very emotional for us too. And I think that that was a fantastic thing to read, but it was also a very upsetting thing to read as well, because there was a 21-year-old man who had never been able to access the cinema or the theatre before because he had found himself excluded. And I want to finish, presiding officer, by uh, mentioning um, the, uh, the Lion King again, because when, uh, when the Lion King performance took place, one of the cast members... Uh, made a very uh, good speech at the beginning of the performance and said, much too often, autism has to adapt to society. And it's about time a little bit of society adapted itself to autism. And that brought the house down when that was said. Because for people in the audience, that was what this is about. This is about ensuring that there are no barriers to accessing theatre and cinema out there. Because people, with, people uh, who could attend a mainstream performance will never find themselves excluded by relaxed performances. But people with autism, other disabilities and sensory impairments often find themselves excluded by performances that are not put on with those adaptations in place. And that's why today I hope that those members who contribute, as well as highlighting the experiences that they have in their own communities and their own constituencies, will consider what they can do to put pressure on theatres, on cinemas, on production companies bringing tours to Scotland to try and encourage more of them to put on these kind of performances, which I'm sure we would all agree would be most welcome in Scotland. Many thanks. We turn to the open debate speeches of around four minutes, please. And I call Claire Adamson, first of all, who has indicated that she has to leave the chamber for parliamentary business. And Claire, will be, Claire Adamson will be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. My apologies to the whole Chamber for having to leave after my speech this evening. Can I congratulate Mark Macdonald on securing the debate and commend the tremendous amount of work he has done in raising awareness and expanding opportunities for autism-friendly theatre and cinema productions? And although I do support this work, he didn't quite persuade me onto a space opera this week for International Autism Awareness Day. However, I do um, congratulate all my colleagues who are willing to take part, and I might just have a quiet bounce on the trampoline at home. I didn't have to look far to find many examples in my region of autis autism-friendly productions, such as Chaotic's Relaxed Wizard of Oz Pantomime last Christmas in East Kilbride, and also the Hippodrome in Bowness, which is a whole season of autism-friendly performances. Music, creativity and culture is what defines us as human beings. And can I finish by saying that while culture and access to culture should not be limited, 
and it is just as important that autistic young people have an opportunity to express their own creativity by participating in music, theatre and performance. Can I commend to the Chamber a project in North Lanarkshire with the Council's Autistic Education Unity, Unit and a charity called Real Time Music? Real Time Music exists to create and provide opportunities for disadvantaged young people in the creative industries, which will have an important impact on their personal, social and career skills. Um, they are very talented youth workers. At Real Time Music worked with a group of youngsters from the Autism Unit in North Lanarkshire who got to be pop stars performing, recording and even shooting a DVD. Known as the Castle Hills Cool Dudes, all the youngsters have had autistic spectrum disorder diagnosis and attend the school's language and communication support centre. And this, this, the, the position in the spectrum is very varied with some having very little language or um, um, communication with other people. But this eight week music project let parents work with their children to gain new musical skills and then premiere their DVD at a special school event. The tutors from real time who had no specialist training in working with people with ASD, worked with the families in harmony to make a song choice, plan a detailed storyboard of their video. They had a session in Real Time's Music's New York Hill recording studio. And they, would, they have now got a, produced a fantastic version of the Black Eyed Peas, I Got a Feeling. Real Time Music captured their magic moments as a charity at their weekly meetings. And everyone in that group says that there were more magic moments from this project than any other community engagement that they had been involved in. It was a unique experience and one in which each child took something different from and which showcased their individual talents and skills in a way that their parents may never have seen. For some it meant being able to stay five minutes longer each week at the sessions. For others, it was to show a musical talent that no one had been aware was there within them. And if I can quote the deputy head, Lorna Ferguson, who said, Real Time Music Project has been one of the most exciting, inspirational and rewarding experiences of my teaching career. All our children, including those with ASD, deserve exciting, inspirational and rewarding experiencing, whether enjoying culture or taking part in it. And I commend this to debate specifically on World Autism Awareness Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Uh, Presiding officer, I'd like to congratulate Mark Macdonald on bringing the debate to the chamber and would like to support the motion in highlighting what I see as a great step towards inclusion and understanding of autism in Scotland. Living with autism in 21st century Scotland does not mean just getting by with the basics of life. It means having the right to enjoy the same pastimes and the same pleasures as the majority of the population. That is why on this year's Autism Awareness Week, it is fitting that we look at what is on offer to improve the quality of life for autistic people in Scotland. As the motion points out, many cinemas have been showing autism-friendly films. And this week in particular, UK cinema operators have come together to host the first ever National Week of Autism-Friendly Screenings in support of World Autism. These are tailored towards providing autistic children with a relaxing and entertaining experience, reducing the chances of heightened anxiety. Reduced sound levels, increased lighting and advert-free content allow this audience group, their families and carers to be comfortable and feel fully included in the unique experience of cinema. People who may be excluded from the traditional cinema experiences as they may find the sensory experience too overwhelming not to mention the adverse reaction of others present, as Mark MacDonald has emphasised, are now able to watch a wider variety of films more frequently in an environment conducive to their needs. The new world of autism-friendly entertainment goes beyond the silver screen, however. Mark MacDonald's motion rightly highlights some of the progress being made on the live stage as the big names of Scottish pantomime welcome this new audience into our theatres. He mentioned in particular, and the motion mentions Aberdeen Performing Arts, who did an incredible job working to produce a relaxed or softly, softly version of the pantomime Cinderella on the 3rd of January. It was a one-off, but it was much enjoyed by all in attendance who benefited from the more subdued presentation of extreme elements of the show, such as pyrotechnics, loud noises and strobe lightning. 
Mark Macdonald, um, emphasised and indeed quoted several of the parents who, whose children benefited from that and uh, other shows, for example, in Edinburgh, The Lion King uh, and The Snowman. The drive towards helping autistic people engage in mainstream pleasure pursuits is not only confined to cinema and theatre. Scottish Autism, a charitable group working with high-functioning autistic adults, has been exploring new ways of helping individuals to develop relationship and connections with others through healthy socialisation in everyday environments. Groups of atten attendees decide on their preferred field trips so the experience is tailored to their preferences. Through creating safe social spaces, we are able to give individuals the chance to form a better understanding of how to interact in everyday situations and do it in a way that ensures they also feel that they are accepted and included. This is why the Cinema and Theatre Initiative is such a laudable step forward. In closing today, I would like to highlight why the 2nd of April World Autism Awareness Day is so incredibly important. It is important because it draws global attention to the need to place human rights at the heart of all our policy and to uphold the human rights of children and, uh, children and adults uh, on the uh, autistic spectrum. They have a right not only to the basics of life, such as clothing, a stable living environment, education and good health, they also have a right to live well. That means having access, wherever possible, to the same privileges as others and to be met with understanding rather than ignorance. I will end with the words of Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the UN. He says, World Autism Awareness Day is about more than generating understanding. It is a call to action. I urge all concerned to take part in fostering progress by supporting education programmes, employment opportunities and other measures that help realise our shared vision of a more inclusive world. I once again, I congratulate Mark Macdonald on bringing forward the motion. Many thanks. And I now call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Nanette Mill. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, I too want to congratulate uh, Mark McDonald for securing this members' debate, and also to commend him for highlighting this uh, positive move uh, by cinemas and theatres uh, across Scotland. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity uh, to not only highlight the issue of autism, but certainly to applaud the organisations who have opened their doors and provided facilities for children and adults with autism. Now, as we know, that autism uh, can be a complex developmental matter that typically appears during the first three years of life and affects a person's ability uh, to communicate and, and interact with others. It is defined by a certain set of behaviours and is a, a spectrum disorder that affects individuals differently and to varying degrees. And it's estimated that around 1% of the UK population uh, has autism. And that's one in every 100 people in the population. If each person with autism has different needs and barriers to overcome. Uh, I have been fortunate to, to meet uh, representatives from an organisation called Reach for Autism, uh, based in, in Berkeley. I met them on a number of occasions, and they carry out some uh, excellent work breaking down the barriers surrounding autism. And that's, it's an excellent support group formed by parents who actually wanted to do some more for their children to ensure that despite autism, they could still meet their full potential. And they provide a very welcome service, offering much needed uh, support, services and opportunities for children, adults and families living with autism. But the underlying theme uh, of Reach for Autism is one of connection and community. Uh, for them, it's about filling in the gaps uh, in the service provision at the moment. They like to keep things simple and they have developed a, a creative and a hands-on approach called the Reach Way, a method whereby the five main areas of focus are relationships, education, action, community and health. And as the word reach itself implies, to hold out a hand to someone uh, to communicate with, to succeed in having an effect on someone. And this is what they do, it's what they're there to do, and what they manage to do. And they've done it very successfully. And they reach out to help families with autism. And I commend them for the work of this organisation, but it's, it's there when families need them most, and it provides an excellent service to the people of Inverclyde. And one of the positive achievements of reach uh, was their work with uh, the Waterfront Cinema in Greenock. Uh, this collaboration uh, with the cinema ensured that uh, autism-friendly screenings took place. Uh, this allowed children with autism to experience the pleasure and the excitement of attending the cinema, something that Mark McDonald was talking about earlier, uh, something that's all too often denied to them. And uh, I, I visited the Waterfront Cinema last year as uh, part of my summer tour around the west of Scotland. Uh, and certainly I was impressed by their commitment uh, to their customers. Uh, and I certainly would like to thank uh, and well, congratulate everyone at the Waterfront Cinema uh, for making the autism screenings happen, but also for the, the other social inclusion initiatives, such as screenings for local day centres in Inverclyde as well. And this is not something 
that they do for profit. Uh, they are not usually commercially successful. However, the owners of the company and the management team firmly believe that, that they need to be more than just a commercial cinema and that uh, they have a duty to ensure that everyone who wishes to go along to the cinema, cinema gets that opportunity. And that is a great commitment to actually have uh, for the area and certainly for the whole of Inverclyde, including families uh, with autism. Now, presenting officer, this work between a commercial cinema and the support for children and adults with autism, along with the help uh, of Reach for Autism, highlights actually what can be done in communities all across Scotland to provide additional autism screenings. And certainly I commend them and also certainly once again commend Martin MacDonald for bringing uh, this important issue forward to the Parliament uh, uh, once again and certainly on uh, such a day uh, like today, uh, World, uh, World Autism Awareness Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now call Nanette Millen to be followed by Patricia Ferguson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I add my congratulations to Mark MacDonald for bringing this subject to the Chamber this evening and for his very interesting and heartfelt contribution. And I congratulate him on his successful efforts to promote relaxed theatre and cinema in Aberdeen. As today marks the seventh annual World Autism Awareness Day, I'd like to touch on some of the facts associated with the condition and how a greater understanding is a huge advantage to helping people with autism eh, to lead a normal life. Autism affects millions of people around the world, including more than 700,000 in the UK alone. How a person with autism communicates and socially interacts is often difficult to diagnose, as it has no physical signs. That's why early intervention is essential. Mark MacDonald's motion makes reference to theatre productions of Cinderella and The Lion King, and it's also interesting to note that at least six cinemas across Scotland now offer autism-friendly screenings on a regular basis. The necessary adjustments to things such as not making a screening too dark, reduce sound and loud movie volume, all help in allowing an individual with autism to actually enjoy a performance. The developments of such initiatives are relatively recent and have their origins in the United States through the Theatre Development Fund, which created a programme which would make theatres and cinemas more accessible to children and adults on the autistic spectrum. But these improvements in sensory-friendly sensory establishments only occurred within the last five years or so, so we have some catching up to do. As we'll all be aware, one of the characteristics of someone with autism is to be lively and often noisy. In the confines of a cinema or theatre, such behaviour is wrongly frowned on by people who don't understand autism. Similarly, the desire to move around would not be acceptable to some in an audience. The great advantage of special screenings or performances is that people with autism, especially children, don't feel restrained. Also, adjustments to lighting and sound means that the potential fear and trauma of an autistic person in a cinema or theatre is removed. I'd like to end my brief contribution by mentioning one case which highlights the need for people with autism to be given greater access to the arts. I read about a 10-year-old boy with Asperger's syndrome who likes to talk to the characters on the screen. On one occasion, Daniel was watching Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull when he became convinced that a spider had crawled across the screen. He therefore wanted to share this with all around him, asking them if they too had seen the spider. The inevitable hissing and complaining which followed was very hurtful, very hurtful to Daniel's mum, and indeed it made her feel very angry, quite rightly too. Uh, that's why the sort of initiatives uh, that are being discussed this evening are to be welcomed, and I pay tribute to cinema change such as View and Cineworld for putting individuals ahead of profit. It is the right approach. Certainly. Mark MacDonald. I wonder if also, um, given that Aberdeen Performing Arts have announced that there will be a relaxed performance of Horrible Histories uh, next month, and that follows on from the relaxed performance of Cinderella at the Panto, this demonstrates there's nothing to fear from holding these performances uh, because they can be uh, repeated in future or because they prove to be successful. Nanette Mill. That sounds very interesting. I might even attend it myself to see what it's like. Um, I certainly would like to, like to see this uh, system uh, extended because everyone enjoys cinema and theatre and I think it's time that everyone was treated fairly and equally. So once again, my thanks to Mark MacDonald for securing the debate. Thank you. Many thanks. And before I call the Minister, Patricia Ferguson. Um, 
Can I, in opening, um, apologise for moving and confusing everyone, but the lectern unfortunately wasn't working. So we um, have these little technical difficulties. But the motion calls for us to applaud autism-friendly theatre and cinema, which of course we do. But I would also want to applaud Mark Macdonald for bringing the motion to Parliament tonight and for securing debating time on this extremely interesting and very important issue. I'm sure colleagues won't be surprised to hear that I truly believe in the transformational nature and power of the arts. And I very much welcome the work that is done to allow young people to be involved. And in the past, I've, I've spoken on, on a number of occasions about the importance of the arts to people suffering from mental health, from dementia, and from physical ill health too. But it's very interesting to be able to focus on a particular group of people for whom a range of small but perhaps significant adjustments can help to make their experience so much better. Now, I think cinema is a wonderful medium and I enjoy the cinema greatly, but I have to say I think there's something very, very special about a live performance. And I think there's something very special about a live performance that is about sharing it with people you care about and people you want to enjoy that experience with. So the idea that young people particularly would be denied that opportunity because of their condition, um, to be able to enjoy live theatre with their parents or with their family or with their friends, seems to me to be something that should be challenged at every opportunity. And the kind of work we've heard about tonight goes to the heart of that um, proposition, I suppose. I also think that theatres can be in intimidating places for anyone. The fact that you're watching a performance in the dark, that you may have to negotiate some steep steps, help to make it a place that is different, that is unusual. So by accommodating the needs and requirements of young people with autism, I think we actually are saying that theatres don't always have to be like this, that there are other ways of doing things. And that might be something that is welcome to other groups in society as well. I can think of my own elderly father who loves the theatre, but finds the steps and the lighting very tricky to negotiate and you know, finds it quite a hard thing now to do because of those problems. So for people like him, the idea of going to something where the lights are still up would actually be very welcome. And maybe it's something we'll look at too as a family. But I also am very conscious that there are now a number of performing arts companies for young people that specialise or make a point of including young people with a range of disabilities in the performances themselves. And that, to me, has to be something that we both welcome and encourage going forward. I um, happen to know a young man who lives not very far from me who has uh, autism. And I've been in his company on a couple of occasions now when he has been at a performance in his younger sister's school. The sheer enjoyment that that young man has from that relatively simple performance cannot be measured. And the fact that he's able to enjoy that with the rest of his family, to cheer on and applaud his younger sister, is just something that I think is very, very special and is exactly what Mark MacDonald was talking about this evening. I do wonder, though, whether it would be possible for organisations like the Royal Conservatoire to think about how they encourage students to look beyond the ordinary when they're doing theatre productions and to look for opportunities to work in the kind of situations that we've heard about tonight. I think this is a very good way of celebrating and raising awareness of Autism Awareness Day. And I very much thank Mark MacDonald for bringing this to the chamber this evening. Many thanks. And can I now invite Fiona Hislop to respond to the debate. Cabinet Secretary, um, I can give you around seven minutes. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I also thank Mark MacDonald for bringing this debate to the Chamber today on the 7th Annual World Autism Awareness Day and highlighting the great work that theatres and cinemas around Scotland have been doing on making performances autism friendly. And I also want to recognise uh, Mark MacDonald's work personally on raising awareness and campaigning on uh, autism issues. 
We are committed uh, to doing all we can to ensure that everyone, including people with autism, their families and carers, can maximise their own potential, enjoy and participate in a rich and diverse cultural life. But this means that they must also be able to exercise choice, control, dignity and freedom in their daily lives and be supported to live the life they choose. Uh, participation in everyday life means being able to do the same ordinary things that non-disabled people take for granted. Going to the cinema is a good example of an ordinary pleasure which can make an extraordinary difference to people with autism and other disabilities. My colleague, the Minister for Public Health, launched the Scottish Strategy for Autism in November 2011, along with £13.4 million of funding to improve autism services and access to these. The vision with the strategy has always been uh, first and foremost about people, that individuals with autism are respected, accepted and valued by their communities. The strategy aims to improve the lives of people with autism and part of this is for them to feel included and have equal access to the community in which they live. And this includes having access to the same social activities as everyone. But I, I know from the comments and understand that that isn't the case as we are just now, but it's where we want to be. This vision of inclusion is something that I feel strongly about as Cabinet Secretary for Culture. Arts and culture, as uh, Patricia uh, Ferguson has, has just mentioned, are fundamental to our quality of life and everyone should have the opportunity to participate in and benefit from cultural experiences. And it is our job as government to create the conditions for meaningful access and participation, working with the cultural sector to find innovative ways of bringing culture to more people and communities. And I know through my discussions with them that Creative Scotland, as a national organisation supporting Scotland's arts and cultural sectors, is equally committed to widening participation in the arts and creative activity. It funds a number of organisations that work with people with learning disabilities and autism, one example being Project Ability, which offers visual arts workshops for adults, children and young people. Mark MacDonald is quite right in his motion to praise major cinema chains such as Cineworld and View for the work that they have done in putting on autism-friendly screenings. He's also right to note that such support is not limited to these chains. For example, art cinemas such as the Glasgow Film Theatre, the Mayo Centre in Shetland, the Belmont Cinema in Aberdeen and the Cameo Cinema here in Edinburgh have also put on film screenings aimed at the artistic uh, community. And I particularly want to commend the Glasgow Film Theatre who um, have regular autism-friendly screenings at 12.30pm uh, on the first Saturday of the month. As well as praising the cinemas, we should also praise those who have supported such screenings. Organisations such as Dimensions, which have been referred to already, which provides services for people with autism and learning disabilities, have been vital to working with the cinemas to ensure that they provide a welcoming and friendly atmosphere, for example, through screening films through, with more lighting and a softer soundtrack than normal. I also applaud the efforts of theatres in Scotland for their work in programming autism-friendly performances and Mark McDonald's praise of Aberdeen Performing Arts and the Playhouse Theatre here in Edinburgh is richly deserved. There is also tremendous work being done by others, including our national performing companies and Edinburgh festivals in this area. For example, in de December 2012, the National Theatre of Scotland launched Scotland's first autism-friendly Christmas show, working with the National Autistic Society Scotland. This was achieved through reducing the sensory intensity of the show and then including a familiarisation period before the performance. The National Theatre of Scotland continue to build on their expertise and collaborate with others through regularly including in their programming relaxed autism-friendly performances in venues across Scotland. And additionally, this year's Imaginate Children's Festival in May uh, this year has included relaxed performances in its programme to ensure an environment where every member of the audience can be comfortable to enjoy the experience in their own way. And I know the work being done by cinemas and theatres has made not only a real difference to those with autism, but as Mark MacDonald has highlighted in his motion and referred to, uh, to in the speeches we've heard, to their families and carers too, that social experience of experiencing uh, performances together. For example, I'd like to, to read the comments of one of the users of Glasgow Film Theatre's monthly screenings. I quote, thank you all so much for providing such a welcoming atmosphere. It is great for us to be able to relax and not worry about our child making a noise or upsetting other cinema goers. It can be really difficult to do things together as a family and it's very important for all of us. Because of your wonderful idea, my daughter, who has severe learning difficulties in autism, could go to the cinema and bring her 10-year-old sister, her 6-year-old brother, his friend and two carers who support her. We all had a great time. 
I am glad also that these improvements that we have seen in the last few years is part of a, a broader wave of improvement by cultural organisations to increase opportunities for participation to a wider audience. And these are, this is also an issue about audience development and new audiences and opportunities. And I think it should be embraced in such a fashion. For instance, infrared sound facilities in cinemas and theatres for hearing impaired individuals, audio description headphones for the blind or partially sighted are increasingly available. However, and I think we need to reflect as much as we want to do, there is still more work to be done in bringing cultural activities to more people and we will continue to work with our partners in and outside of government to achieve this. I therefore join in praising not just the work of theatres and cinemas around Scotland and the work they've been doing in making the performances accessible to those with autism, but also the fantastic work they have done in enabling performances and screenings to be enjoyed by a wider and diverse audience. I very much like that statement that was made in Aberdeen, that for too often that uh, people with autism have to adapt to society. I think it is about time that society adapts to autism. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. Perhaps next year, Mark MacDonald can persuade everyone else onto a space hopper. That concludes uh, the debate on applauding autism-friendly theatre and cinema, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.